me. So slab over floor 10. Or in whatever 8 because 1 is the base and 2 is the ground floor. So in order to design a slab I have to select it, go to activity by selection. And first of all, we'll discuss about the efforts we use for design. So if we go to results, the beams and the slab, yes? The beams and the slabs are poured oh. together. Uh, what? Uh, yes? Yes. What is different uh, internal each and uh, rig? Uh, we'll discuss now. We are discussing about this. So, uh, all you have internal edges, and do you have ribs in your model or only members? No. Okay, so what is because the main I idea? Use a rib, maybe a, it is a difficult to delete and to rectify yes but there's a problem uh, you in your model <coughs> you design beams that are poured together right the, the beams and the slab are poured in the formwork at the same time right it's the same concrete so the slab yes. is not sitting I just uh, internal each Yes, the problem is like this. If you have a structure that only relies on plate for uh, taking the forces, then uh, that uh, structure will first load the plate and then give something to the linear elements like these beams. However, this is not the way a beam works. So the beams should be modeled as regions because the beams will have an effective width so when i'm we are when we are uh, calculating but not this composite analysis uh just a second rib in the slab so i want to have a clearer picture Okay, this is better. So what is the idea? When I have to design a beam, I will also have some flange that is um, ob obtained from the slab. So the slab, a, be a part of the slab, will uh, group with the beam and form a T. Especially when uh, I have to dimension the uh, lower part of the reinforcement. So this part is will be compressed. This concrete part will be compressed when I'm designing the lower reinforcement. And when I'm designing the top reinforcement, it will be neglected, but I'm interested in the reinforcement placed above. So in order to concentrate the efforts to the beams, I have to connect the linear elements as ribs Otherwise, I get very small values for the beams and big values for the plate. But normally, this is the way it should work. So, this is how we should model. The internal will only connect yeah. the member with the plate, but it will not transfer the forces from the slab to the beam. So, unfortunately, it's a good thing you said I know they are more complicated to use, but we will need to connect the linear elements. So all these beams need to be connected to the slab as ribs. So if the slab is made of one piece, it's okay. If it's made with more pieces, it will be more complicated. But uh, this is a very important condition. Because otherwise, we'll have little forces in beams and big forces in slabs, but it's not a good modeling of the situation. So this type of modeling you use would be suitable 
let's say in case of precast concrete, where you have uh, concrete beams which are pre precast or prefabricated, and on top of them a plate only sits, so it doesn't transfer moments. It only sits on the uh, beams. So this is the actual model. Uh, model your plate does not communicate correctly with the beams. So uh, if I go to internal forces to see how these beams look, we have very small forces. They are not, well, they are not extremely small forces, but they are too small for the degree of the structure. So uh, the slab takes most of the forces. So uh, it's uh, important that we connect uh, all uh, beams to the slab as uh, uh, ribs you can do this like this with this function you say connect nodes and you select one plate you select the beams and you click on this connect 1d as ribs but i'm not going to do this now because we'll waste time with the recalculation i'll only show you for now how we can interpret the reinforcement of the slab the required reinforcement but you will need to do this modification. So you would need to uh, connect each for each plate, each floor, the beams as ribs. And then you will have another option which is called uh, rib. So you'll get the real uh, efforts. Otherwise, it's not a correct model. So it's quite important. For columns, it's not important because it's the same loads in the end that are transferred to the nodes but for beam and for slab it's quite important uh, what is the idea of designing a slab the idea is after we finish the rib connection we can go here to members and see some internal forces for this beam so we will see an envelope of uh, what we created we see an envelope of forces and of course we'll get some peak uh, results which can be neglected and also you will have to uh, use a very discrete uh, network so also when you're doing the calculation and if you want to design the slab correctly you will have to do a fine mesh uh, network. So if I activate the draw mesh, we'll see that the mesh is quite weak. Uh, we would need more refine mesh refinements. And uh, the recommendation by SIA is that you use the thickness of the slab, or at least twice the thickness. You will have a bigger model but you'll have better results because with this kind of weak uh, meshing you'll have big results that uh, will not lead to good uh, reinforcement or good interpretation of the behavior of the slab so uh, we can see maximum and minimum moments it is important however to see them more discrete so for instance in this area the blue is irrelevant even this uh, orange is irrelevant because in reality there will be a column there so basically on uh, yeah. because of finite element uh, modeling where we use the columns as vertical elements uh, so only as line elements uh, The, if the meshing is not refined, we'll get some peak results there, so some very big results, which are, let's say, not correct. So basically, at the area, at the zone of the column, there is no problem. So in this area, 
there should be no problem because we have column on top of another column so we have no deformation here so relevant is this red and also relevant is to look for maximum uh, moments and we'll have some colored displacement of moments we can either watch this <coughs> averaging and uh, we would use to we would have to uh, avoid these peaks in order to avoid the peaks i i will um, remove the highest values so i will adopt a, a big the biggest value as being this uh, light blue so i'll place here go to maximum and i'll say 90 kilonewtons uh, meter per meter and also tick use user defined and when i go refresh i'll see that i have red in the column area where it is not going to be deformed but then i have more precise values in this region so we have small values in these areas for reinforcement my means the moment so in order to interpret correctly the required or the moments in a slab we have to look at the local axis so my means the moment tangent to the y local axis so if we activate the labels of the local axis we'll see this is the y this is the x so my is a moment that is tangent to the y axis y m x is tangent to x so this is how we interpret the moments but also if you do not like this colored representation there's also another solution to create a section so I can generate a section through the slab let's say I'll use here this is a section and I can see the moments in this section the way I do that is by going to member 2d data internal forces and click on section and uh, then refresh so this will be a bending moment for this plate in this area the mx i go to my and this is a my moment so it this moment is distributed per meter so it's measured in kilonewton per meter and this will be a designed value you are interested in reinforcing this uh, plate I'll show you how we interpret the reinforcement. However, until you finish the model with the rib, uh, I cannot guarantee that uh, any of these results are valid. So it will be your homework to do the ribs and then uh, finish also the columns. And you can also reinforce uh, the beams. And then uh, we'll come again to analyze this reinforcement of 2D elements. So for now, We'll go to we'll yes. close and we'll go to concrete to the member member design member design ULS current. We can select this combination, hit refresh, and before I hit refresh, we'll look at the local axis again. So X is local X number one, Y is local X number two, and Z is point upward, which means. Uh, uh, the upper or the lower reinforcement. So, how do you interpret these values? AS1 minus is the reinforcement required on the first direction, which is the X direction. So, the reinforcement placed parallel to the X direction. And minus means that is opposite the sign of this arrow. arrow. So, minus means that is the lower reinforcement of the slab. So, yes. I'll refresh. So, refresh here. And we will get at first 
a theoretical required reinforcement. So we will get a fem uh, mapping with the theoretical required reinforcement for this direction uh, in square millimeters per meter. We'll then assume some bars. We can deactivate these warnings. And I'll hit refresh to have a clearer picture. We can see here that we have some requirements. So now we are discussing about the reinforcement of the lower part of the slab parallel to X, meaning the reinforcement that we will place on the long uh, ending of the building. So we will press reinforcement parallel to this long side of the building. And uh, we can see some required reinforcement, but also we can go here and see some uh, either numbers or we can uh, convert it to reinforcement. So, uh, okay, but we leave it for here like this. Uh, and uh, I can actually propose some diameter, apply to the slab and then check if it's enough. So basically it's the same story as with the moments. So if I watch this map, this is the required reinforcement for the long direction. If I go AS2, it will be the lower reinforcement on the short direction of the building, which I expect to be somehow higher. I will, uh, let's say, pick the results to this green, which is 1200. It's quite big. But it's better to pick the results because in some areas we will provide additional reinforcement, but in <coughs> most areas we'll have current reinforcement. So now I'm picking the results. So I get a better distribution because this blue is quite irrelevant. And you'll see that now the biggest requirement I ask is this one. 1200 millimeters per meter and I see that in these areas where normally the reinforcement of the beam will be I require more reinforcement this reinforcement would not appear like this if this was connected as a rib to the plate so you'll see that it's really important that we connect the beams with the rib function and then uh, have a better meshing because for now it's hard to say the required reinforcement. I will do an example now, yeah. but uh, it will be okay only when you finish those changes. So in order to reinforce, you can choose here the material, surface is lower, and these are the two directions. We can assume, let's say diameter 10 and 150, the step. You hit okay. We select this plate, hit escape, escape, and now I created the reinforcement for this plate. If I want to see the reinforcement of the plate, I right click, set view parameters for all, I go to concrete, and uh, I can activate the reinforcement in the 2D. So instead of simple, I can say real positions, OK. And I will actually see the rebar. And if I need to check if V10 at 15 is enough, I'll go to Member Design ULS. And here I can choose, uh, okay, average of peak, it's a good idea, but I will choose, uh, for instance, AS1. And instead of required areas, instead of required reinforcement, I will say additional reinforcement. What is this additional reinforcement? Additional reinforcement is the result of subtracting the user reinforcement from the required reinforcement. So from the theoretical required reinforcement, we subtract the user reinforcement and what remains is the additional reinforcement. So this is basically, we apply some real diameters to the reinforcement of the slab and we evaluate if it's enough. So if it's uh, enough for 
to fulfill the requirement. And we'll do now a check. And basically this is how it's done on both directions. Uh, this is how you will uh, check the reinforcement only after finishing the rib model. And uh, in the rib model you will also tick ribs. Now uh, we can see that most is zero. So zero means everything is okay. You have enough reinforcement. And in some areas you can see there still requires some reinforcement. But this type of reinforcement disappear once we use the rib uh, model. So this will be your homework. Uh, but basically this is how we do, these are the two ways we will do reinforcement in SIA.